Hey everyone, in this tutorial series we're going to demonstrate how you can convert raw scanned models into character creator characters, complete with a dynamic wrinkle and expression system. In this part 1 we're going to import the original scanned model and then use the headshot plugin to generate our CC character. From there we'll use the face tool plugin to send the character to ZBrush and use the project method to conform the character closer to the original shape and skin details. In the next parts, we'll look further into how to get the wrinkles and expressions consistent as well. 3D models can be purchased from numerous platforms online and may already include a library of raw data and expressions. What needs to be done here is to convert this data into a format that Character Creator can utilize for its own expression and wrinkle systems. So to get started, let's take a quick look at the workflow from converting our model into Headshot to sending it to ZBrush. To get started, you'll want to import in your raw scanned head model and select Start Head Generation in the Headshot plugin panel. From there, you'll need to assign key points to certain features of the model to define the mesh shape that Headshot will generate. You'll then proceed to generate the head in Step 2 and then refine the mesh in Step 3. For more details about this process, please check out the dedicated Headshot 2.0 tutorials. Once you're satisfied with the mesh, you can choose your body type template and generate the new model. From there, you can assign CC compatible eyes and then use the Face Tools plugin to send the character to ZBrush for our first refinement steps. We'll go through the basics of the Face Tools plugin, and if you want more in depth information, please check out the dedicated Face Tools tutorials. Under Subtools, we can see all of the meshes that make up our model. If we click on Poly F, it will enable the polygroup function which allows us to work with specific parts individually. It's important to be aware that subdivision level 1 is the base level for CC characters, while the highest subdivision level is for normal textures. If subdivision level 6 is not sufficient for your specific needs, you can always add more, and the highest subdivision level will be baked into CC as your normal texture. Under Layer, you can see the list of blend shapes which make up the character's expressions, in addition to a Skin Details layer. In the Face Tools plugin, you can click Diffuse to display the Diffuse map and Range to display the facial feature areas which are used for reference when sculpting. You'll also find the button for Skin Details. You'll want to enable Record Mode for that layer to modify it. You can also switch expressions in the Face Tools plugin as well, and use the Range button to reveal the areas where the wrinkles will be displayed. The Update Eyes, Teeth and Tongue button is designed to synchronize the movement of teeth with expressions. For instance, if I switch to the Jaw Open expression without enabling this button, the teeth and tongue will not respond accordingly. Keep in mind that when this is enabled, it will take longer to load different expressions, so use it sparingly. You can also click on Apply Mask to mask out the areas outside of the expression you've selected. You'll also see that there are four wrinkle groups, which contain all of the expression wrinkles. You can click on Range here to see the effective areas. Please consult the dedicated wrinkle tutorials for more information on these areas and how they affect your character's appearance. Okay, now that we're familiar with the basics of the Face Tools plugin, let's take a quick look at the workflow for optimizing your scanned characters. To get started, let's simply import in the raw scanned model into ZBrush and scale and position it consistent with the existing CC head. You can see here that the polygroups are divided into different parts, the upper eyes, lower eyes, ears, chin, and the rest of the head mesh. What we want to do first is align and overlap the CC head with the original scans and then project those parts using the various polygroups. This will allow us to make the CC head mesh shape more consistent to the raw scan data shape via ZBrush. Let's start off with the ears at subdivision level 1. These are more difficult as they are uneven, but thankfully the reference points we placed via headshot ensure that the ear shape of the two models are relatively similar. You can select Mask by Feature under Masking to mask the edges of the poly paint in order to fix the shape and position of the ears. From there, we can move on to the chin, and after adjusting the shape, use the Smooth Brush to smooth out the mesh. 
It's also important to model the neck to conform as closely as possible to the raw skin. The project brush works well here for large flat topology. If we isolate the chin via mask by feature and use grow mask to expand the area a little bit, we can proceed to use project to project the chin, since the shape is fairly similar. However, for the ears, we need to sculpt the basic shape first before using the project function or brush. This may also require secondary adjustments. Keep in mind that we're doing this all at subdivision level 1, the base mesh level for the CC character. Ensure that all of your edits at this level are done before proceeding to the normal maps and final skin details at higher levels. Eyes and other flat areas can also utilize the project function, and if the results are not ideal initially, you can also utilize the grow mask and project distance functions. In the end, you want to use a combination of these features at subdivision level 1 to conform the mesh as closely as we can to the source. After you feel like you've done a decent job at subdivision level 1, then it's time to up the detail to subdivision level 3 and 6. Generally you don't want to go directly from level 1 to 6 as your mesh will likely need some intermediary level tweaking for the most consistent result. Start by hiding the inside of the eyes and mouth by holding shift and control and left clicking on the polygroup twice. Then click on the other polygroups and continue hiding them. Then control A to mask them all. Use shift control and right click to exit isolate mode, then project all. There are some issues with the mouth and eye meshes here, so I'll undo that project and expand the masking via grow mask and boost mask. Project again at subdivision level 3. We can also increase or decrease the distance as appropriate. The results are not bad, however the eyes will need to be fixed separately. I'll proceed to edit that polygroup, starting at subdivision level 1 and using smooth and project. We can also use project all on the eye polygroup. After completing this on subdivision levels 1 and 3, you can continue on to level 6 and even level 7 for further detail. Be aware that higher subdivision level editing will require more system resources and therefore may have laggy performance. In this case, our original actor is also wearing a headpiece that we don't want to include in our CC model, so let's go about getting rid of that. I'll use the smooth and move brushes first to get the shape I want at a lower subdivision level, and proceed to add some uneven aging surface marks throughout, and hair follicle detail at higher subdivision levels. From there, I'll smooth out the brow area and add further skin details. Let's move on to aligning the teeth and tongue next. We can use an open mouth blend shape from the original as a reference for adjusting the teeth. Here I need to add a new layer to the CC base skin head subtool, and open the character's mouth so we can adjust the teeth and tongue positioning. Keep in mind that this is not an expression layer and we'll delete it after the adjustment is finished. You can adjust the upper and lower teeth separately and even go down to the shape of each individual tooth to ensure that your teeth are consistent with the original source mesh. Remember to delete any added layers when you've finished editing the teeth and tongue. To paint over the scalp, you'll want to convert your diffuse texture to poly paint and simply choose any color that is different from the skin color to paint over the areas that you don't want. I'm using green here, but any standout color is okay to use. You may find it easier to paint properly by masking out the ears as well. To make things a bit easier, you can export any of the CC3 Plus character head diffuse texture maps for the scalp. In ZBrush, import it into the texture map channel, convert it to poly paint, and hide the diffuse texture. You'll see the green area we just painted has now been replaced with the CC scalp texture. To refine it, we can also draw on it again and click poly paint from polygroup. In the case that there are color differences between the imported material and the character's skin color, use adjust colors and then use the various parameters in that window to achieve a more suitable result. You'll also want to smooth out seams between the face and scalp as well. Once all the painting is finished, you can see that the CC character head mesh on the left now looks almost identical to the original source mesh. After the subtle mesh edits made at high subdivision levels are baked into your character's normal maps in CC, you'll have a fully animatable model that takes up much less resources than the source mesh, 
while maintaining the visual quality. Here you can see the beautiful results once we update to Character Creator. That's it for this video on getting your CC character as visibly consistent as possible with the high poly source mesh. In the next video, we'll take a look at how to generate your own set of CC expressions from the raw scanned expression data. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.